There are certainly many ways to get to Potsdam. The most beautiful is to take the road from berlin wannsee down Königstraße, then past Schloss Kleinglinike. Representatives from Japan have planted two cherry trees at the base of the bridge to symbolize joy and gratitude for the reunification. Potsdam is like an island, surrounded by lakes and streams from the Havel River. Visitors are drawn by various true and fictional tales to the potsdam Glinica Bridge and are enchanted by the splendid views. Visitors are also impressed by the views to the left, the Tiefer See extending from the Babelsberger Schloss and to the right, gazing over the Jungfernsee towards the Church of Sacro. Berliner Straße is universally known to diviners and healers due to its power axis and places surrounding the Heiliger See are places of extraordinary strength. The facade constructor Ernst Petzholz was almost solely responsible for shaping the Berlin suburbs. Almost all buildings display a style typical for Schinkel. But as time went on, started to evolve a more lavish architectural signature. The building in Mangastraße 19 is a typical example for Ernst Petzold's work. Take a stroll round town and discover yourself.
the Gothic library on the southern end of the Heiligazi threatened to sink and after successful restoration now receives the guests of the new garden. The Russian colony Alexandrovka was built during the period of Friedrich Wilhelm III in honor of a Russian men's choir at that time. Friedrich Wilhelm III loved the melancholic Russian songs. A choir was formed with the previous Russian prisoners of war. An avenue with Russian blockhouses in the form of an Andreas cross was erected according to the foundation plans from Peter Joseph Lenny for the remaining 12 survivors. The small Russian settlement was complemented by a chapel. The Jewish graveyard is the last evidence of the Jewish past in Potsdam. The Triumph Tour at the foot of Mühlenberg should have been the starting point for a tremendous boulevard, starting from Sans Souci and leading to the Belvedere on Klausberg. The vineyard terraces and pergolas were designed by the landscape architect Le Nez. The former city canal will be restored. This once flowed around Potsdam during the period of Friedrich Wilhelm I. The canal was used as a sewer during the GDR period.
The Große Fischerstraße is Potsdam's oldest settlement. A castle was built here approximately 700 years after Christ. The present day home for the elderly was built with the original facade from the Heiliggeistkirche, which was destroyed in 1974. The old city of Potsdam was embraced by the chime tower of the Garnisonkirche and the Nikolaikirche silhouettes. The Freundschaftsinsel was remolded according to the form of the Federal Garden Show. This island has experienced changes again and again. It was created by Karl Förster in 1937 and is now a place that has plenty to offer. The Nikolaikirche governs over the old city of Potsdam. It was built by Karl Friedrich von Schinkel. The obelisk pays homage to the Potsdam architects, Schinkel, Persius, von Knobelsdorf and Gontard. some fragments of the city castle are left. It had been the heart of Potsdam. It was partially destroyed during the war and it didn't fit into the socialist ideals of the post-war era. Due to this, the castle which once stood opposite the Nikolaikirche was demolished and removed. Since then, one speaks of the lost center of Potsdam. The few remaining fragments await for the reconstruction of this unique castle. The remains of the Ringa Kolonaden that show the connection between the present film museum and the city castle show how beautiful the castle once was.
The Lustgarten has been re-landscaped and the Fortuna Portal of the Stadtschloss has been reconstructed. The present-day film museum was once the unique orangerie, which was converted into stalls during the soldier king's reign. It is one of a few constructions which survived the last days of war and the post-war era. Another focal point of the old city is the Neue Markt, which is shaped by the well-preserved building constructions from the 18th and 19th century. The royal coach stalls were built in 1787. The sculpture is an impressionable depiction of the personal coachman of Friedrich the Great and reveals what was once concealed behind these walls. The most striking of all buildings in Potsdam is the guards' church next to the long stall. The facade is the only remaining relic. The gate and the chimes remind us today of the almost 90-meter-high monument. The building was demolished in 1968. The building construction plans were discovered as the site was being cleared. This enabled the total reconstruction according to the original plans.
18 mosaic boards from an artist named Fritz Eisel on the former church location. A large military orphanage and opposite the Hillerbranschen homes remind one of a boulevard. The rest of the Neustädter Gate and the steam engine house located in the mosque are still intact. The Brandenburger Tor to Potsdam was the first new entrance built under Friedrich the Great during the second Baroque city expansion. This is where the present-day pedestrian zone in the Brandenburger Straße begins. The Catholic Church, St. Peter and Paul, is located at the end of the street. One can find an example of the housing situation in Potsdam, which was established during the 18th century in Hermann Elfleinstraße. The great Dutch house in Lindenstraße has a changing history. During the National Socialism period, the former city court was used as the genetic health court. After the obligatory sterilizations during the Third Reich, it was then used as the state security prison by the GDR. The so-called Linden Hotel is a monument against political force. The French church is today a landmark for religious freedom. At the time of the great Kurfürst Friedrich Wilhelm, the forefather of all Prussian kings and emperors, Potsdam offered the pursued Huguenots Potsdam as their second home. The two statues at the entrance door are a sign of gratitude and thanks from the Huguenots for this protection. The citizens of Potsdam meet in the daily market on the Bassinplatz.
a Russian monument reminds pedestrians of the Russian victims from World War II. Gothic Nauenatur was erected by an architect named Johann Gottfried Büring. A family business rich in tradition was situated here. The palace bakery Rabien. The local cafes invite visitors to Potsdam to take their time to stroll through its historic scenery. The over 130 Dutch houses show the more significant European side of Potsdam. In only five years, a Dutch colony of tradesmen and artists originated here. A generous offer was made in order to lure Dutch immigrants. Religious freedom and liberation of the migrants' quarters was warranted. Plus, each migrant would be granted their own cottage as a welcoming present. Not nearly as many arrived as the soldier king had hoped for. Who wouldn't accept such a grand offer today? The Jägertor is the oldest remaining entrance to Potsdam. It was built in 1733 during the second city expansion under the order of Friedrich Wilhelm I, also known as the King of Soldiers. Sans Souci Friedrich the Great's summer palace is like a magnet bringing audiences to Potsdam. The sculptured park by Peter Josef Lenny invites all visitors to wander pleasantly through history. The church and cemetery from Bornstedt lies behind the Orangerie. Here one may find the graves of many famous persons who once molded Potsdam. The Krongut Bornstedt has an extensive history. Once a manor, a brewery and distillery, later it was reconstructed in 1867 into an Italian-styled country manor by the crowned royals Friedrich Wilhelm and his wife Victoria.
A scientific park was established on the Telegrafenberg over a hundred years ago. The first astrophysics institute in the world was opened here in 1879. The outstanding Einstein Tower, built from 1920 till 1921, from the architect Erich Mendelssohn, which can be found amongst the present utilized scientific buildings. Well-known names can be viewed while strolling through the new graveyard. The author Bernhard Kellermann of The Tunnel and the physicist Hans Geiger are buried here. In 1939, the township of Babelsberg became part of the city of Potsdam. The remarkable centennial town hall of Nova Ves was built in the traditional Gothic brick style. New homes for Protestant Czech Viva families were established. Friedrich the Great presented the Church of Friedrich and the present-day Weaver's Place in 1752 as a gift to his new subjects. The observatory built in 1914 is an important technical monument in Potsdam today. The most well-known connection with the name Babelsberg are probably the film studios. A new media city and film adventure park was created in 1990. A villa settlement near Lake Griebnitz developed due to the rapid expansion of the new Babelsberger film industry. Film producers and film stars have claimed this area as their new domicile. However, more than half of the inhabitants vanished during the Nazi regime because of their Jewish heritage. Privileged Nazi VIPs moved into this area The Soviet army expelled the inhabitants during the end of World War II and occupied the buildings for personal use. This area is renowned through its various famous residents in the past. 1945, accommodated by Allied representatives. Stalin lived in the present-day Karl-Marx-Straße 27. The American president, Harry Spencer Truman, was accommodated in the building in Karl-Marx-Straße 2. 
The orders to drop the first atomic bomb over a residential area came from this address in July 1945. What followed is widely known. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were destroyed. The bordering area around the Gribnitsi was well guarded during the GDR period. The splendor of the Neubabelsberger Villa area is being enjoyed again since the unification.